We turn now to another 24 Republican contender, Vivek Ramaswamy, the biotech entrepreneur and political rookie. He made a surprising presidential bid back in February, calling himself an outsider. Now he's diving headfirst into Republican culture wars and says it's time to rethink a number of federal agencies. But Ramaswamy, like other GOP candidates, trails the undisputed Republican frontrunner, former President Trump. Ramaswamy has been a vocal defender of President Trump. He joins us now to discuss his campaign and that pledge to pardon the former president. Vivek Ramaswamy, welcome to Fox News Sunday. It's good to see you, Shannon. Okay, so you have said you would pardon the president. You've asked others to join and do the same. Um, you talked about this being a political indictment, political in nature, and you've talked about dismantling institutions wholesale, like the FBI. The New York Times, which was covering you out in Iowa, says this is what the question becomes for many people. Are Republicans like Mr. Ramaswamy risking the stability of the country for their own political fortunes? Some fear that the aggressive rhetoric he and other Republicans regularly use, both in defense of Mr. Trump and in attacking the justice system could cause lasting damage. Do you acknowledge that possibility? Are you worried about it? Look, I think I'm even more worried, Shannon, about the opposite possibility, which is when the, the Department of Justice weaponizes police force against people based on their political viewpoints. That already undermines trust in the justice system. So I actually think it's important for leaders, including like me, to stand up and call that out unsparingly. I actually think that helps build up trust in our institutions to say that, you know what, it doesn't have to stay this way. So under my watch, we'll make sure the FBI, first of all, doesn't exist as an institution. In the local level, you have local prosecutors and local police. At the federal level, you have U.S. Marshals and the Department of Justice. But when you have large bureaucracies that sit in between, that's a formula for corruption. And whether it was that FBI going after Martin Luther King Jr., threatening him to commit suicide 60 years ago, or whether it's after going after political conservatives like President Trump today, that's not justice. And I really would have a much easier time, frankly, in this election if President Trump weren't in the race. So this isn't about my political calculus. This is about standing up for principles over politics, and I actually think that helps build trust in our institutions. That's why I'm speaking out. Both you and the president have embraced this label um, or raised some eyebrows about it, American nationalist or nationalist. You've said you get that that might be uncomfortable for some people. It might turn off some voters. So why embrace it, and what does it mean to you? To me, nationalism doesn't have to be a bad word. It means we stand for the ideals that set this nation into motion 250 years ago. Meritocracy, the pursuit of excellence, the rule of law, free speech and open debate, self-governance. These were the values that won the American Revolution, Shannon. And I think we need to be proud of these ideals again. Young Americans across this country are no longer proud to be American. I am. And as the first millennial ever to run for president as a Republican, I think it is part of my responsibility to revive that civic pride in the next generation. And the beautiful thing about America is that we're not a country founded on an ethnicity or on a single language or a monarch. We're a nation founded on a set of ideals that brought together a divided group of people 250 years ago. I think those ideals can still bring together a divided group of people today. That's what I'm running to lead, and I expect we can, Shannon. That's why I'm in this race. All right, let's talk about why you're in the race, because you're sitting at an average of 2.4% at Real Clear Politics polling. The average is there. And the folks over at National Review are not convinced you're actually running for president. Uh, they write this, like Mitt Romney, Ramaswamy speaks conservatism as a second language, and like Mitt Romney, he doesn't quite know it. Ramaswamy isn't really running for president. He's building a ginormous mailing list. The writer argues that running and losing can actually be very lucrative, TV and radio content contracts, book deals, speaking fees. They think that's what you're about. That's laughable, Shannon. Actually, you know what I did? I did not take a tin can and ask a bunch of donors with hat in hand for permission to run. I've lived the full arc of the American dream. I'm proud of that. But I've put over $10 million of my hard-earned money. We're going to put more of that into this campaign. So the idea that this is profitable for me is actually a joke. The reality is you make these sacrifices because we care about something greater. That is our country. I think we are in the middle of a national identity crisis, where if you ask most people my age and even younger, what does it mean to be an American? You get a blank stare in response. I think that's a problem. I think too long the conservative movement, we have been running from something. I am in this race to start leading us to something, 
to our vision of what it actually means to be an American today, to speak the hard truths that others in the Democratic Party and even others in the Republican Party are afraid to speak out loud. There are two genders. God is real. Fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity. That last one actually got me censored on Microsoft-owned LinkedIn. But I do think it's going to take an outsider, not somebody who grew up in the political system, but a true outsider to get the job done. That was Trump in 2015. But I'll tell you this, Shannon, I am polling a little bit ahead of where Trump was in June of 2015. The debate stage is going to be a crucial next step. And I'm confident we're going to not only win the election, but do it in a landslide like what Reagan did in 1980. And I think that's the single most unifying thing we can deliver for the country. You do talk a lot about being an outsider. You're new to this political game. One of your most ambitious desires is to dismantle part of Washington. You talked about the FBI earlier. You talk about this with respect to federal agencies, the administ administrative state. Um, Washington Post, George Will writes a piece over there saying, Ramaswamy, who has not encountered many problems that are impervious to his charisma and certitude, believes that a forcefully expressed presidential vision can conquer Washington's viscosity. When he has lived longer, he will know better. Now, even President Trump talked about how hard it was to, quote, drain the swamp, the agencies here, the infrastructure, the bureaucracies. What makes you better equipped? So, look, Shane, I bring a unique combination of, yes, somebody who is an outsider who's had success in business, but with a deep understanding of the Constitution and statutory authority to do it. If I may say this, I think I'm the pres presidential candidate in the last 30 years who has the best understanding of the legal basis to actually shut down the administrative state. 5 U.S.C. 3302 empowers the U.S. president to set the regulations governing the Office of Personnel Management, setting the rules of people who work in the civil service departments of, the, of that federal bureaucracy. So if there's one thing I can promise, by January 2033, when I'm leaving office, the top thing domestically that I'll say we will have done is by the time I'm done, we will have, again, three branches of government in the U.S., not four, that will shut down the regulatory state and Shannon, that's one of the keys to actually unlocking the economy itself. We're slated to grow at less than 1% GDP growth this year. We've grown at over 4% for most of our national history. And the administrative state, the way it shackles the U.S. energy sector, the way it pays people to stay at home instead of to go back to work, this is a big part of the problem. And I understand this deeply on constitutional grounds. Okay. I believe that if an agency should not exist, it deserves to be shut down. I will expect to cover some of these fights in the Supreme Court if you uh, go that route with some of these federal agencies and employees. Very quickly before we go, I want to ask you about Mark Cuban's comment. You wrote a book called Woke Inc. You think it's bad for corporate America. He says it's actually good business and people are looking ahead to their customers of the future. Quick comment from you. My view is that businesses have a purpose. It is to provide products and services to customers who actually need them, and yes, to make a profit unapologetically. And when those businesses wade into social disputes, not only is that often bad for business, just look at what happened to Bud Light, look at what's happening to Target, but more importantly, it's bad for our civic culture in our country, because what we need is apolitical spaces that bring people together, whether they're black or white, or Democrat or Republican, the private sector, the sports stadiums of this country, the labs of this country, that's where Americans unite regardless of their partisan or identitarian affiliations. And so I think woke capitalism is bad for capitalism, but it's also bad for American democracy. Okay. That's why I've been leading the crusade against it for the last several years, and that's what I'm taking all the way to the White House. All right, we'll put you and Mark Cuban on opposite sides of that conversation. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you so much. Thank you, Shannon.